Students have been baffled by art history for years, because frankly, no one really cares. Even more baffled than the students are the professors of art history. What is the best way to engage the students? Make them want to learn, make them actually care about art history. In this short three minute segment, we'll examine three such teaching styles. The traditional approach. Here we have a great example of Gothic architecture. This is the Notre Dame de Reims, translated as Our Lady of Reims, completed by the end of the 13th century. The towers are 81 meters, or 267 feet tall, though they are originally designed to be 121 meters, or 394 feet tall. The South Tower has two bells. One is named Charlotte. It was named this by Charles the Cardinal of Lorraine in 1570. As you can see, the architecture includes flying buttresses and four towers around the transepts. This is the Notre Dame de Paris, which translates to Our Lady of Paris, also known as the Notre Dame Cathedral. This is another example of fine Gothic architecture. It was among one of the first buildings to utilize flying buttresses. Please uh, be able to differentiate between the two, have all the names, dates, terms, and measurements memorized for your 100 question short answer test tomorrow. Um, I hope you took good notes. I will not repeat any of this, and it is not in your required text. The Youthful Identifier Approach. Sup, guys? Y'all ready to learn about some art history? Huh? Yeah! Well, I wrote a little jingle about my man, Juan Sanchez Catan. Uh, uh. Yo, let me tell you about Juan Sanchez Catan. You need a fruit painted, he was your man. He didn't paint pictures, it was masterpieces. Cucumbers, cabbages, melons, and cheeses. Just every day I'm in a black background. So sit back, so I spill the facts now. And that's how he captured still life. It made art history with volume and light. His images of balance and vegetables took the noise to a whole new decibel. It's questionable, I mean, all those melons cut open. But even still, his message was spoken across the land from his studies in Toledo to this page in this art history yo book class is missed I'm out the psychofocal approach the brain best works are focused on one thing multitasking confuses the brain inhibits learning do not take notes when I'm talking if you are taking notes while I'm talking you're not listening when I repeat that is when you take notes this is a painting by Wang Yu called View Across Streams and Mountains. This is just a detail of a 39 foot silk scroll. Yu was mentored by Wang Ximin, though he painted popular subjects of the time, he still managed to develop his own unique sense of style. Yu was a very successful landscape painter. He painted all these beautiful depictions we see here of nature, but Yu was more interested in the past artwork of past masters rather than studying nature. Hugh cared more about studying past masters work than actually studying nature. That is all. So there you have it. The three approaches to teaching art history. The traditional approach. This is supposed to be engaging. The youthful identifier approach. Teach y'all about this guy who painted these pictures. And the psycho focal it's fun. Which one worked best for you? Write down your answers and pass them to your teacher at the front of your class. 